Which sword should you start with? Does it matter? Well, yes. And no, it all depends. What is it you're trying to accomplish? What's your goal? Are you a warrior philosopher looking for deep insights into the human condition? Are you an incurable romantic looking for escape from the soul-crushing realities of the everyday world? Or are you an actor preparing for a role in a movie? As we always say, your why is the how of your what. What are your physical capabilities? Some weapons are heavier than others, require more muscular strength or muscular endurance. Each one uses your body in different ways. What's available to you? If you're interested in a particular discipline, can you find a good teacher of that discipline? Can you get yourself to a good teacher? Can you study it online? There's some things you can learn online, some things you can't. As a teacher, my concern is always, what will a particular weapon teach a particular student? Every student's a unique individual and may need different things at different times. What weapon is right for this person at this time? I almost always start people out with a small sword, which by which I mean foil in common use. Um, foil technique and tactics are based on the use of the small sword. The small sword is a civilian weapon, not a military one, and I tend to prefer it for that reason. It's very light and almost everyone can manage it. It's inexpensive. And the things you learn with the foil will apply directly or indirectly to all the other weapons. It perfectly illustrates the essential principles of combat. I think a weapon that perfectly complements the small sword is the saber. I consider it primarily a military weapon, although in some times and some places people did like to use it for the duel. While the foil deals exclusively with linear actions, the saber includes both circular and linear actions. It's for that reason much more complex. If you acquire facility with both saber and small sword, you will have a broad understanding of all the essential principles of combat. I don't generally start people with a saber. Saber is a more physical weapon than the small sword. And there is a temptation to substitute physicality for fine skill. Saber can also be done on horseback. Indeed, the saber was the darling of the cavalry, and I mean, I'll, I'll take any excuse to be on a horse. Mounted saber is quite different from dismounted saber. In dismounted saber, the most important part of the saber is the center of percussion. With mounted saber, the most important part of the saber is the horse. The long rapier is the great-great-granddaddy of the small sword, and it's also a civilian weapon. It is longer, heavier, and slower than a small sword. And for that reason, it's very often paired with something in the left hand, such as a dagger. The long rapier requires bigger, more athletic movements of the body than the small sword, and it's more demanding for that reason. But I've had two really, really good students who started with the long rapier. The long sword is the heaviest and the earliest of the weapons I teach. It's almost exclusively a military weapon and 
For that reason, it's my least favorite. The longsword is primarily two-handed and primarily cutting. It has a great deal in common with the Japanese katana and the art of kenjutsu. Longsword does not transfer uh, as well to the other weapons, I think. No matter what weapon you start with, you should at least sample some of the others to get a different perspective. You should also try some unarmed martial arts as well, boxing, karate, jiu-jitsu. Regardless of where you start, if you practice correctly, all roads lead to the same wisdom and to each other.